Foiny Japan has been sidelined from the Piss Nickels launch, a new report claims. Development staff are said to have been reduced as PlayStation places importance on the U.S. market. And all I have to say is, ha ha! That's what you get for giving power to the American branch. I do not feel sorry for the Japanese branch whatsoever. Every time I bring up how horrible Sony has been for the past like four years, everyone's always like, oh, but my Japanese branch, oh, the Japanese branch needs to get things back in order. No, the Japanese branch are the cucks that decided to cede power to America in the first place. They deserve everything they're getting right now. Yeah, they thought, like, oh, these Americans know what they're doing. Yeah, let's put the future of our company on the shoulders of California. That's going to end well. And now they're like, why are we being downsized? Why does America not care about our opinions? Why are all of our exclusives being driven away to other platforms? What's going on? Well, let's read a little bit more. We got a lot of pointing and laughing to do. Yeah, peak, you get what you deserve moment. Soiny's home territory of Japan has been sidelined in promotional planning for the Piss Nickel and uh, seen its development team slashed as the corporation places more importance on the U.S. market. <laughs> That's according to a new report by Bloomberg, which claims that the Piss Poor's disappointing performance in Japan, as well as uh, PlayStation's decision to move its HQ to California in current year minus four, have seen its input significantly reduced for its latest console. Well, this uh, this is a decision they made. They have to live with it now. PlayStation's North American arm, Sony Interactive Entertainment America, has seen its influence grow, grow significantly over the past four years, VGC reported in October of current year minus three, following the platform holders' push towards a centralized global structure. Now, what do I always say about my global audience? Whenever a company says they're going for a global audience, what they actually mean is we're going to censor everything down to the lowest common denominator. And, and that's what's going to be happening. Just wait until the American branch starts censoring down to China standards. That's going to be fucking hilarious to watch, by the way. The process resulted in a significant number of layoffs across its European operation in the past 18 months as leadership shifted to California. And uh, not even just layoffs. A lot of people quit as soon as the American branch took power because they saw where things were going and they didn't want their good names and reputations tarnished by this bullshit. According to Bloomberg sources inside of Play PlayStation San Mateo headquarters, the U.S. office was frustrated by Japan's marketing for the piss poor, which it believes led to fewer consoles being sold compared to its predecessor, around 10 million units. Or maybe it was you motherfuckers interfering with Japan and basically telling Japanese gamers four years ago that, uh, oh, you guys aren't welcome here. We Fuck you guys. We don't like you here anymore. You think they may have sold more than 10 million extra units in these past four years if you didn't literally cripple the Japanese market? Oh, it's totally, it's totally Japan's fault. Well, well, honestly, they get what they deserve because, again, they're the ones that gave power to America in the first place. So I don't feel sorry for them whatsoever. But uh, I'm still going to point out when the American branch is being full of shit, which is literally every single time. As a result, Japan has been sidelined in planning the Piss Nickels promotion, according to several Japanese PlayStation staff cited by Bloomberg. Employees in Tokyo said they've been left waiting instructions from California, it claimed. You yeah, remember four years ago when I was covering articles of uh, third-party Japanese developers basically having to, uh, to deal with Sony's Trust and Safety Council censoring them? And they have to they have to show their games on American time as well. The U.S. office's critical view of the Japanese operation has also impacted its game development efforts. It claimed, to be fair, any Japanese developer still developing games on PlayStation, they kind of deserve to fail at this point. You 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 deserve everything you fucking get if you haven't learned and made the switch and gone to PC yet. 
PlayStation's Japan Studio, which co-developed games such as Bloodborne, Astro's Playroom, and The Last Guardian, has seen the rolling contracts of many of its creators not renewed, former employees reportedly told Bloomberg. That's a blessing. If you're a Japanese developer, why would you want to work for Soiny? Are you fucking stupid? Again, any Japanese developer that still works for Soiny or still releases games on that platform, they deserve to go broke at this point. And I know why they do it. Because these fucking boomers are just stuck in their ways. Well, we've always been a PlayStation company. We're always gonna be a PlayStation company. Even as they're fucking us up the ass and destroying our products and costing us money and leading to us getting fired, they still are unwilling to leave. They get what they deserve. This is just natural selection. Japan-based developer support teams have also been reduced by as much as a third from their peak, it claimed. Now, this one may just be because Japanese developers don't want to do business with Sony anymore, so they don't need these people. The U.S. office believes uh, the PlayStation business doesn't need games that only do well in Japan, employees in the California headquarters reportedly said. Good! I'm actually glad that they're... See, because my fear was that they would still try to lock down these Japanese developers in exclusivity contracts and then just fuck them over like they did to Marvelous. But honestly, if this is what Sony is doing, if they're just trying to, uh, to completely cut themselves off from Japan, I fully support this. Because maybe now these Japanese developers will finally see what the fuck is going on and move to Switch and PC. Responding to Bloomberg's report, uh, Soini spokeswoman Natsumi Atarashi said, our home market remains of utmost importance. <laughs> Corporate mouthpiece. And claimed that any suggestion Soini was shifting its focus away from Japan was incorrect and doesn't reflect the company's strategy. Yeah, what company strategy? Censoring the Japanese market out of existence? Making it as hostile of a work environment to Japanese developers as possible? Yeah, 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 that, that's totally a Japan first strategy, uh-huh. Dude, seriously, any, any developer that believes this shit, they deserve whatever they get. Any customers that still believe that uh, Soini is all about Mud Japan, you deserve to be ripped the fuck off. Speaking to VGC's network partners at GameIndustry.biz last year, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan insisted the company was not becoming Americanized following its centralization in California. And anyone who was dumb enough to believe that lie, again, you get what you fucking deserve. It's not like it's a fucking secret to what these people are doing. They've been open about their censorship and their intention to destroy the Japanese industry for four fucking years! Ryan claimed the new look organization had been designed to be more efficient ahead of the piss nickel launch in current year. I really want oh, I really want to reinforce the point that globalization does not mean Americanization or vice versa. Uh, that's a that's a blatant lie. So uh, when Americans talk about globalization or global standards, they mean American standards. Because notice how they always cry like little bitches when they're forced to bend over for China's standards. Like, I thought you wanted global standards. No, global standards is literally the lowest common denominator of censorship. What, did you think global standards means America gets to set the standard? Were you really that stupid? I think they were. Becoming a global organization does not in any way, shape, or form mean becoming an American organization. Lies. I'm living proof of that, as good as Geordie Boy sitting here running PlayStation. Another European, Guerrilla Games co-founder Herman Holst, was named uh, PlayStation's new head of Worldwide Studios last November. The move saw former Worldwide Studios president Shuhei Yoshida leave the role to head a uh, new initiative uh, looking after smaller independent studios. Hopefully in a different company. In the past, PlayStation's regional arms were able to act autonomously, signal, uh, signing their own games and setting their own marketing budgets, a.k.a. the good old days. This allowed regional departments in the U.S., Europe, and Japan to specifically cater to their own audiences, but also had the downside of creating a disjointed group operation, which some third-party publishers sa uh, are said to have expressed frustration with. Oh, so are you saying they did this because EA was butthurt? 
Ryan told GI the nature of AAA piss poor and specifically uh, and certainly piss nickel development. We're obviously not going to have Worldwide Studios make a game for one specific European country, and uh, that might have been the case back in the PSP times with uh, Invisimals, which was popular in Spain. So pretty much the only types of games that PlayStation is going to be making right now are lowest common denominator made by committee focus group style games. Things like Marvel's Avengers. That's about all you can expect to come out of Sony right now. I think this will be where Suhei Yohida's new task of working with indies will come in. If we are nimble, flexible, and global, we can work with small developers to allow these country-specific needs to be met. Any Japanese indies who are stupid enough to sign with Soiny after what they did deserve to go bankrupt. After how bad Soiny backstabbed Japanese developers, anyone who saw that happen and decides, oh, hey, I'll sign this deal with Soiny, you get what you fucking deserve. Ryan also told the site, if we are to be successful, we need to do the exact opposite of everything we're doing right now. Oh, sorry. Let's read this. We really need to leverage the opportunities that globalization brings. I am going to give you some examples. One is around the production of the, uh, P of the Pith Nickel, the definition of the feature set of the development and the implementation of those features. No talk about the games, though. That process this time around has been massively more streamlined compared to anything we've done in the past. And from the sounds of it, the entire production process seems to have had more problems than in the past. Overheating, shitty hardware compared to the Xbox. I mean, honestly, Microsoft could end this right now by saying, psych, the Xbox Series X is actually going to be 400 bucks. Game over. The product planners are now having one conversation instead of three different regional conversations where they need to reconcile positions that were often conflicting or contradictory with an endless process of iteration and consensus. That's not happening anymore. We have one conversation and we get on and do stuff. Now, too bad it's all the wrong stuff. So the advantage of doing it the old way was uh, usually when the American branch was being fucking retarded, Japan and Europe said, no. Now the American branch runs the show and Japan and Europe have to play along. So we're going to be seeing a lot more really stupid decisions coming out of this company in the future. And I look forward to both seeing them fail and seeing the fanboys cry at how ripped off they were. Because the PlayStation 5 is an early access console. How many fucking games does it have at launch? Like fucking nothing! And it's a, it's a broken piece of shit with so many issues. And, you know, the fanboys are going to buy it anyway. So I don't want to hear any of them crying. Oh, man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of buildup and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo. And so far, it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.